Hey, this is Jersey. You're watching the Garden State. You're listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. I am Josh Chomick. And this week, we are once again without the man himself, Jimmy Parks. He could not be with us again. We are filming this at 9.56 in the morning, Yeah. Thursday, July 14th. Jimmy is at work. We salute him. We salute the working Jimmy, man. yeah. You know, the Jimmy fandom was very upset that he wasn't here a few weeks ago. And I'm realizing there's people that listen specifically because of Jimmy. Oh, yeah. They don't even care which about is, us. Which is special. And Jimmy's a good guy. And uh, we also went uh, on a trip this weekend, and we didn't bring Jimmy with us, which was disappointing. Because we've been saying on the podcast we were going to do one specific thing this summer uh, for a while now, and we finally did it this past weekend. And when Jimmy found out that he couldn't make it, he was so mad. Was he? Yeah, he was like sad. He was just like, come on. Like, I told you guys about this. I wish I could be there. I felt bad, but like, we'll go back, definitely. Want to tell them what we did? Yeah, this past weekend, we finally ventured down to the Cowtown Rodeo. The longest running weekly rodeo in America that happens to be in New Jersey. It was epic. That that's an understatement. It was the the highlight of my summer so far, I think. Like we went into it saying, like, oh, like we'll leave after an hour. Like we really had we didn't know what to expect, honestly. But man, we stayed until the very end. We were blown away. Yeah, I I I'm not gonna lie. I the joke going in was I was like, guys, because it started at what, seven? Yeah, seven thirty. No, it's oh, gates were at six thirty, and then started at seven or seven thirty. Seven thirty. Okay, so so it starts at seven thirty, and I was like, going to be honest with you guys, I feel like around eight thirty, we're all going to be like, all right, let's pack it up. <laughs> but we could not leave. It was so amazing. It was the most entertaining sporting event I've been to in a long time. Just a lot of cowboys, a lot of tying up animals. And, yeah. Um, I, I don't even know how to describe the things they were doing. That's how out of touch I am with this scene, like the rodeo scene. It was just every event. They did the bull riding. They did the barrel racing. They did the, uh, I don't know what you call it, when they, they chase the baby bull and they, they jump off the horse and tackle it and roll it over. Like It was all these amazing things. And I just, the whole time, kept thinking to myself, I cannot believe I'm in New Jersey right now. This is amazing. Yeah, it felt like we were down south. Like in... Yeah. Probably like in Georgia or something. It was so different, bro. It was a whole different atmosphere. I was like, this is amazing. It's an hour, 45 minutes from us. It was a drive, but it was so much fun, and we're definitely going back. I'll definitely go back, and next time we're bringing a grill because the tailgate was also very real. Like Everybody had cornhole out, and they were grilling for their families, and it was a very fun experience. And um, You could easily spend the whole day there. Yeah, very family-friendly. Like That was the one thing I was interested to see... I was telling some people at work the other day, like, if the event is BYOB, I don't think they actually sell liquor, so so people could bring their own beer or whatever. And my concern was, I'm like, this is going to be a very rowdy event. I could just (laughs) sense it going in. And no, it was super family friendly. Like, you bring your kids on out and and, uh, I don't know. I just, I had a great time. I was like smiling the whole time. There was, there was hilarious parts of the event. I, I think we're posting the TikTok tomorrow. So if you're interested in what we did, just go on our Instagram or TikTok and like we have like a minute like highlight of what happened and what went down. If you're yeah. curious as to what this rodeo looks like, uh, we filmed it all and we made a video about it. So yes, look forward to that. Also this weekend, Josh, you got a buzz cut. I cut off all my hair. You cut off your mullet, man. It, it's gone. It's missing. I miss it so much. You look like a refined gentleman. And for the podcast listeners, once again, jump over to the Instagram to see the updated Ooh. look. It's really not that big of a deal. I cut like an inch off. It's not. You could probably. You can't even tell. I'm looking at the screen right now to just look at you. You look like kind of like um like an R and B singer now. <laughs> you look so clean. Wait, like, with the with the fade. Like on like the, the yeah, on you got a fade and like your hair on top looks so shiny. You look like uh I don't know. You look oh, like yeah. a pop star. Yeah, that light above us is giving some shine to the gel. Like a nice reflection right there. It's funny because neither of us normally rock buzz cuts and and this podcast has mainly known me as a guy with a buzz cut and you the guy with the mullet and now you're a buzz cut guy too. I so. know, bro. Not, Interesting. They're not going to be able to tell us apart anymore, bro. Yeah. Well, you're you actually no. I saw comments. They're like the blonde guy. He <laughs> said this or like. Wait, what? Yeah. The one time someone was trying to like criticize us on TikTok, and the way they referred to you was as the blonde guy. 
and I was like the long haired guy. Like, is your hair's way blonder than mine? Oh, is your hair your hair's brown? I guess right. On my license, I'm technically a dirty blonde. Your hair's brown. No, because like actually, when it gets longer, I think the older I've gotten, the darker my hair's gotten. Yeah. Me if you look too. at photos of me as a child, my hair was as blonde as yours, maybe even lighter. I saw this meme. It was like, what kind of a grown man has blonde hair? Like, it's time to grow up. <laughs> I was like, I, <laughs> I kind of took that personally, man. Like, because I felt it was kind of true. Like, I, I do feel like I, I've outgrown having blonde hair. I think it's time. My dad's hair, like when he was when he was young, he had super blonde hair. And then it goes, it's like dirty. It's like yours. You're right. Yeah, that's like, weird. It happens to men as they get that. older. And I'm like, you know what? That's kind of true. Like, I feel like I'm a little too old to have this blonde hair now. I got to outgrow it. I'm trying to think of like older guys who have like super blonde hair. Um doesn't Ryan Gosling have a nice set of blonde hair? No, he's like dirty blonde. Type in Ryan Gosling hair. Yeah, he's like, he's like okay, the same mind. as mine. Yeah. I thought like, it was like, oh yeah, photos like that one, the bright one. Well, that's what of, my hair looks like if, if I had a flash on. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I do feel like I've kind of outgrown it as well, but... Uh, you rock it, though. You look good. Thanks, brother. And hey, the, the buzz cut looks great on you, man. Thanks. I don't know what's next. I'll probably just grow it for a little while and see, like what the people want too. So let me know if you guys uh, see my hair. Let me know if you love it. If you hate it, I'll take Absolutely. all the, I'll take all the positivity I can get. Um, so yeah, the Cowtown rodeo was an awesome experience this weekend. It Salem was, County. It was, yeah, Salem County way down South. We got some love from our Salem County listeners and, um, interesting part of New Jersey all around a lot of farmland, a lot of spread outness. It's just so shocking. To, it's like a culture shock to us living in central Jersey because we're just surrounded by so many people up here, bro. Can I tell you something? I've always been diehard. I'm from central Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to feel no. weird when we say it out Don't loud. Don't say it. Don't like, say I'm it. I'm not saying I'm from north Jersey, but like when we say it out loud, something feels off about it. Why? I don't know. It's just like central. I just doesn't. F- it makes me cringe oh, a little bit. Don't, don't turn on me, bro. Don't, <sighs> don't, let the, don't let the people turn you, man. You gotta believe. Yeah, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't know what to think anymore. But yeah, it was a, it was a fun weekend. And uh, did you do anything else this weekend before we get into the news? That was Saturday that we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, I think I relaxed. Okay. Did you do anything? Uh, I just. Uh, yeah, I think I did exactly the same. I just relaxed, and um, I can't remember my weekends. I can't either. It's just life is so full on right now. I feel like I did something on Sunday. I just can't put my finger on it. Well, before we get into the news, well, our first news story actually today is regarding the New Jersey housing market. Yeah, craziness, which actually leads us into our first ever Garden State sponsor. Let's go. Josh, how do you feel about that? I'm going to put like a sound effect right there, like a or something, because that's just a no, big deal. You should drop a bomb, a clue bomb. Yeah. Okay, I'll drop a clue bomb right there, yeah. <laughs> It's a big uh, deal. It's exciting that we have a, a sponsor. Um, we've talked about it for 24 episodes. Yeah, we've talked about it for 24 episodes, getting a sponsor. And like most, we have been reached out to by people that want to sponsor us. They're, but it's always things where we're like, we don't want to endorse that. Like, Yeah, we want to like have sponsors that we stand by and things that we believe in. <laughs> it's always like deeply political stuff or controversial stuff. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, I don't want to come. Like, this is a fun, laid back kind of podcast. I'm not getting into that. We're not going to sell out. But today's sponsor is TheRealNewJersey.com. Tell us about it, Josh. What is TheRealNewJersey.com? Yeah, as we all know, the housing market in New Jersey has been nuts lately. You guys know what I'm talking about. You go to look at buying a house, you go on Zillow, and you're like, what is going on with these housing costs? Well, you all need to visit our friends over at TheRealNewJersey.com. Uh, This is a consumer education website that features homes from every municipality in Middlesex, Monmouth, and Ocean Counties with engaging information, beautiful photos, and, you know, what better way to learn about all that the Garden State has to offer? People have the weirdest perception of New Jersey. They think we all gym tan and laundry like we're on the the Jersey Shore, but therealnewjersey.com shows you who we really are. Once more, that's therealnewjersey.com. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody you know. The real reality is that we have a beautiful coastline. We have amazing lakes, rivers, and parks, and tons tons of features that make New Jersey a beautiful place to call home. Visit therealnewjersey.com to find the home that is right for you without the hassle and stress that comes with looking for a home in 2022. It's stressful, bro. 
Yeah, it's crazy times to find a house. And if you're looking to move to Middlesex, Monmouth, or Ocean County, this might be the way to do it. I feel like this is a really amazing tool. And part of what we talked about before with sponsors is like I went on their website and it's just a really sweet setup. It's a great way to find a house. Super easy to look around and see whatever home you want to find in whatever county it is. So check it out. Yeah. And with the housing market shifting, I feel like I am, I'm almost at that spot where I want to buy a house. I want to pull that trigger. And the market's just been so insane that I don't even know where to begin. That's the part of the problem is you feel overwhelmed by just the craziness. Well, can you explain to us about this article, how it's saying that the, the, the market is softening? What does that mean? Yeah, so let's get into the news. NJ.com is reporting that the New Jersey housing market is showing signs of softening. Is That's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's definitely a good... Well, it depends on how you look at it, but it could be a good thing, yes. <laughs> Please give it to me. Uh, so as of May 2022... A buyer activity is slowing as a result of the high home prices and the surge of mortgage interest rates. So as you know, interest rates were really low, which was encouraging people to buy, even with the crazy high housing costs. But now interest rates are rising, so less people are, are buying, which I guess is just you know kind of typical. That's the way it should work. Um, and it says, and due to the more inventory on the market, sellers aren't seeing a deluge of wannabe buyers like they would have just a few months ago. So a continued softening of the market could put downward pressure on home prices. So what they're implying is housing costs are, are going to start coming down because of the rising interest rates, which is just the way the market has always kind of worked. But um, the one thing people have always talked about, at least not always within the last year, has been that there's not a large enough supply of houses. So why we're seeing uh, these crazy high prices is not only because interest rates were low, but because there wasn't enough of a supply of houses available for people mm. to buy. And um, part of that is we've seen in the last two years, people leaving New York City because of COVID, moving out to Jersey. And uh, and also in that time, there's been a lot of people that haven't bought. And now that COVID has softened up, people are like, I want to buy a house. I want to, like my wife and I, we want to buy our first house. And um, yeah, it's just been a, a seller's market because the, there's been a buying frenzy. There's just so much talk everywhere. Like you hear an article about this and you're like, oh, I'm so hopeful. Like, the prices are going to go down and people are like, oh, in a few months, there's going to be like, it's going to get even worse. And yeah. same with gas prices, same with everything else. Yep. So you just never know. Well, I think the, yeah, I mean, we just had um, a report of 9.1% inflation in America for this mm. past uh, month. I think it's month, not quarter. I don't, I'm not an economist. I could be wrong on that. But with high inflation and then also if we have another quarter of negative GDP, uh, mainly the GDP part, not the inflation, but the inflation only adds to it. That will mean that we are in a recession, a, another quarter of, of negative GDP for America. So, which looks like it's going to happen. So that's where I go, even with the rising interest rates and the, and the rates coming down, I just, uh, and the cost of houses coming down, I just feel like there's so much uncertainty. I want to get a house, man. Me too. And I think, I think the reality is this might be bad advice because I'm not a real estate agent. I don't work for the real NewJersey.com. You should go over to them and ask them for advice because they'll probably be able to help you figure this out. I think it's never a bad time to buy a house in America because if you look at the long-term trend of housing costs over the last 100 years, it always trends upward. Yeah, it's going to go down. It's going to go up. Unless you're planning to move, you should just buy a house. Just send it. Just send it. Just bite the bullet. Like It's going to hurt at first, but come on. What's the worst that's going to happen? Uh, I, I guess you buy something you can't afford and then you can't afford your mortgage payment and you lose your house like 2008. That could be the worst Gross. thing that's going to happen. But if you're buying, if you're buying within your means and you're buying smart, I, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't even want you to put this part in the TikTok because um, real estate TikTok is such a frenzy of, of angry people arguing. They're going to be like the blonde hair guy. No like, he doesn't what he's know talking what about. he's talking about. And yeah, I don't have any <laughs> idea what I'm talking about. I'm just saying based off everything I've seen, it seems like... I don't know. Well, that's this podcast. Like we're just giving our opinions, our honest yeah. opinions. We're not the professionals. Don't don't listen to us. Don't Exactly. I don't even know what I'm saying. Yeah, just go to the realnewjersey.com if you want some <laughs> uh, home advice. Go check them out. Yeah, go go get an actual professional's opinion, but yeah, so it's kind of cool to see that the market is softening. You know, I had a friend that listed their house in uh Springfield and they it took them quite a bit of time to sell the house. And you know, there was a point where it didn't take quite a bit of time to sell anything. 
I feel like, yeah, I, like my uncle, he's put his house up and it just sold immediately. It sold within, he got like eight offers in the first weekend. That's crazy. So, yeah, it's cool to see that the market's cooling off. Maybe us millennials will be able to buy houses soon. Um, I talk to, it's so funny, every time I talk to a couple, like we're, if we go to a, a dinner party, me and Shelvin, I'm talking to like another guy who's my age and married. He's like, dude, we're just waiting for things to cool off to buy a house. And everybody's in that spot. Like I talk to so many people that are in that spot and um, which is, it's good to feel like you're not alone, but it's also, it also stinks because as soon as everything, like right now, if it softens, I'm going to have a lot of competition to buy a house, the two of us actually. We're always joking saying that like all our friends, we're just going to buy like thousands and thousands of acres. Just mm-hmm. throw in, and then we'll just build our own community. Well, I saw up in uh, near Stokes. Um, this was like last year. I was on. I go on Zillow and just look at acreage, and you there was like eleven hundred acres of land for seven hundred thousand dollars. And I think I texted it to you and a few other guys. I was like, let's just go in. Let's all go in on it. We could build houses. Each get like two hundred acres. Easy. And we'll just set up shop. Let's split it between like eight guys, dude. It's less than a hundred grand, right? Less than a hundred G's. I don't know how expensive it is though to get. See, because the thing is, the land is the is the one side of it, but then you have to get um, electric. You have to get your sewage run up. I don't know how that even works. Yeah, you just buy it first, then you figure you let all the problems come in afterwards. <laughs> you just take out just, loans. Yeah, you just figure it out one step at a time. I just don't want to rent anymore, man. Yeah. Want my own house. I agree. Let's get this fixed, please. So we'll see what happens with the housing market. Hopefully, uh, the background of this podcast changes soon, and we're not in my apartment anymore, and we are in my house, my garage. <laughs> if I put this into the edit, I just want to like crop out the background <laughs> and change it. <laughs> but so like, it's like a, a mansion. A mansion, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, moving on. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Let me just say, dude, like I like filming early. Because we do have our coffees in hand. Yeah, the coffee is... It's hitting so good powerful. right now. Dunkin' is doing something with their coffee where they're putting a little extra caffeine in, I swear. Dunkin' and Starbucks, I don't know what they're up to, but every time I drink it, my head feels crazy. The only time I drink Dunkin' now is for this podcast. I usually like stick to like McDonald's or like the local coffee shop in town. <laughs> um, I don't know, it hits different for the podcast. That, so That cozy little local coffee shop called mcdonald's yeah yeah it's a local <sighs> also i'm trying to get that duncan sponsor so duncan someone listening's us. gotta have a connect please hook it up i i've said it before the garden state runs on duncan would be a, mm. a great slogan so moving on in woodbridge new jersey a teen was charged with bringing a loaded firearm and a fanny pack to his high school thank god he didn't do anything with it oh yeah this is it's crazy to even think that this could happen and a fanny pack is I don't know. I, well, that's like, it's so many dudes are rocking fanny packs. These oh, I guess days. the cross pack, right? Yeah. Like, when it comes across, it's yeah, just like sense. a fashion statement I just or whatever. Think fanny pack. I think of it like right here. Yeah. You're a boomer. I like, I want a fanny pack. My wife has a Lululemon fanny pack and I'm like, I could rock one of those. Well, yeah. If you guys got matching fanny packs, that'd be like, a, you guys could be making a statement wearing those together. What would, would the statement be? I don't know what people on the internet would talk about it. Yeah. We would be... Like the paparazzi would be all over you guys. The New Jersey paparazzi. Well, let's get on to this. To back to the story. On March 28th, Woodbridge police responded to JFK High School in the Islin section on a report that a student was in possession of a handgun. After police were alerted to the, that Parcel, which is the name of the the last name of the student, had a firearm and a fanny pack, the teen was searched and found with a loaded nine millimeter handgun. Middlesex County prosecutor. Yolanda Sassone said, uh, Parcells pleaded guilty on June 24th to the unlawful possession of a weapon. He had been charged with the adult equivalent offenses of second degree possession of a firearm for an unlawful purpose, second degree unlawful possession of a firearm and third degree possession of a weapon in a school. So what are these kids thinking? They're not. Like, why <laughs> would you bring like you have they're to not. know the consequences? Yeah, they're not thinking, and I think that this is a... Uh, this has happened so many times over the past few months in Jersey. Yeah, it's... Kids it, just bring guns to school. It opens a much broader conversation. What is going on with young people nowadays that they feel this is the, this is the thing to do? Like, a, a lot of our stories we're going to go through today involve craziness, violence, threats. It's like, what is going on inside of people's minds that they that they see this as the solution to whatever pain they're feeling, frustration they're feeling... 
this is like a young man who has the rest of his life ahead of him. Who in his life is like, does he have anybody in his life around him that's going, what are you doing? Yeah, these people, these kids, they need like better um, influences around them. I don't get it. I don't get the, why this is becoming such a trend of people wanting to, even then the story we have about Walmart later that I'm not going to spoil before we get to it. It's like, what is going on with our culture, man? Like everything seems to be collapsing. People are just not thinking clearly anymore. And like, is the kid trying to do this to be cool, to show off? Like, Absolutely. Oh, I, I he, think he's not like actually trying to shoot up a school. Is well, he? I, well, we don't know. I'm just assuming, but like, why would you bring a loaded fire gun, a firearm to school? And not, like, I don't even know. Well, it reminds me of what happened in Clark where a kid got in a fight with another kid and they were trying to act tough. And then it wasn't like the kid was trying to do the classic school shooter thing and, and inflict pain on just random students. He was trying to flash a firearm to show this other kid how tough he was, I think. I, that's basically what I heard of the situation. And it sounds like this might be similar, although I don't know. I, it doesn't. The article doesn't give enough information on the topic to tell us was he was this like he was trying to act like he was tough was it that he wanted to just go shoot his classmates but either way really terrible and i'm glad that the police got him i think that what needs to happen is we need to stop um i mean everybody always says this it's almost a cliche at this point but we need to stop making these young people into celebrities that do this stuff and then we also need to have very very harsh consequences not even just for the i mean the shooters obviously there's going to be harsh consequences if they live, um, but for people that that do anything regarding this, they should be, I think, like maybe tried as adults or something should happen where it it really scares off others from from doing similar. I feel like yeah, I feel like this kid got off way too easy. Wasn't he charged as a minor and like just like, like you read the you read the charges against him, but yeah, well, he those, wasn't uh, tried as an adult. Those were the charges, but it says. Um, Despite prosecutors demanding a tough penalty against a 16-year-old boy who brought a loaded fire uh, handgun to his high school, a superior court judge took a softer approach. The teen was sentenced to a year's probation on June 30th. So, so that's it. He's just getting a year of probation. It's not going to teach him anything. It's not that it's going to. If anything, a year of probation is going to make him feel awesome. Like he's going to think he's the man because he got off with a pro, with probation. Maybe I don't know that the, the inner workings of this kid's mind. Maybe this will shame him enough to go like. I never want to do that again. I never want to, you know, I want to straighten out my life. But I feel like it goes, I, it's going to go either direction. Like a situation like this is either going to make a young person go, hey, I want to straighten up and I want to get my life together and I of want course, to, yeah. like their parents come with them and try to help them figure out their issues. Or it goes, I'm the man, you know, it's never going to be somewhere in the middle. It's one of those two, in my opinion. It, it comes down to what's the home like, like. Yeah. Like these prosecutors, they should be talking to the parents, figuring out like what's a plan like we could take to help this kid out. And how do you even get a gun? Like, is it his parents' gun? Like, you're I, right. Yeah. Because he's 16. It has to be either he somehow on a black market or. Yeah, I don't know how easy it is to or, get like a gun illegally, but it I seems think like all these kids I have think guns. It's pretty easy. I mean, I think it's pretty easy to get a gun on the black market only because if you look at like a lot of. I don't know. I don't want to get into the top. But I think if you look at like a lot of gang violence, you go, how do people get guns so easily? I think it's, I don't know. I've never talked to somebody about getting a gun on the black market, but I'd imagine no. we'd have to, we should do that as an experiment to see what happens. Just to see how easy it is. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. So we'll see uh, what happens here. He's getting a year probation. Um, hopefully this helps him straighten out his life and, um, and he gets his act together and moves on. But I don't know. I, I just, it's sad times in our country for young people. I don't know what's going on. It seems they're lacking direction, not to sound like a diplomat, but like, it sounds like, like they're lacking direction. They're lacking purpose and meaning. Like, and my, like my mom says, they're all lost. They're lost. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is not all of them, but there's a lot that are lost. And you just look at people from a few generations ago. And I mean, we always talk about in America, the greatest generation, the guys that went to World War II and and they all like we were like they were like 16 year olds trying to get drafted to go fight Nazis. You go, "Wow, wow, that was a courageous, moral, good generation of people." And I just don't get what has changed. I mean, I I could figure it out. You look at our culture like go on TikTok and I I mean, the things that are like put up on pedestals nowadays are crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The 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 like the the heroes of this generation are just the I don't know. I'm starting to sound like a boomer and I'm like only 28. I feel like 10 years ago, 
it was so different 10 years ago. Like that's yeah. what's crazy. Things are ex- escalating like crazy right now. Yeah. So yeah, if you go to JFK high school um, and you know some more info about this or this kid, leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on, what your thoughts are. If you like, tell us your experience that day. We'd love to hear about it. <sighs> yep. The third story we have uh, today is another hectic one. And I just, see, here's the thing is, I don't want all our stories to be hectic and crazy, but we got to give the news to the people, right? That's what we're here for, Josh. We're just reporting it. We're here to tell people what's going on. Everything that's going on, we're here to tell. That's, that's a better Come way to put on, it. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> a woman in New Jersey is in serious condition after her neighbor ran her over with his Jeep because she was lighting off fireworks. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong with people? People are losing it, man. People, fireworks. It's fireworks. And this is over 4th of July weekend. A 62-year-old man was reportedly angry over fireworks in his neighborhood when he drove his Jeep off a road and hit a 24-year-old woman seriously hurting her, according to the Hunterdon County Prosecutor's Office. Oh, this uh, will teach him a lesson. Yeah, right. Just run him over with my car. Kevin Stevenson of Lebanon has been charged with second-degree aggrava- aggravated assault Third degree possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose. Fourth degree assault by auto. Fourth degree aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and other motor, motor vehicle oh violations. My goodness. On Saturday night after 9.30, police received a call about fireworks in the area of Old Mountain Road and Deer Path Road, which is near the Round Valley Reservoir. Uh, the caller said that her husband was heading to the area to confront whoever was setting them off. So these people, this is what it sounds like. The oh. wife of this man calls the police and says... People are lighting off fireworks. My husband's going out to see what's going on and confront them. Oh, he was probably raging in the house. He's like freaking out. Then he just yeah. lost and left. And his wife is like, oh, no. Witnesses said a white Jeep Wrangler with large tires and two people inside veered onto the property of Ford Deer Path Road, hitting a woman who was behind a fireworks display, according to the affidavit Good of Lord. a probable cause. So here's what I wonder with that. And I don't want to read between the lines too much, but just based on what the article says, was he trying to run over the fireworks and didn't see that there was a lady behind them? That's possibly what happened. No shot. You think he was just trying to hurt her? Well, yeah. If there's fireworks being lit off, there's a person lighting them off. Like that's that, I'm saying that's a fair point. I just was curious because it says she was behind the fireworks. So maybe he was like trying to run them over and like end the show. <laughs> but even so, like, come on. That's not going to stop anything. Yeah. Like you're just going to get in trouble no matter what driving onto someone else's property anyway. It says Stevenson was identified as a local resident who owned... A similar Jeep and officers went to his home. There they found his Jeep with front end damage, which is crazy that no. the front end of his Jeep was damaged. And Jeeps, they have they have uh, nice bumpers on the front of them usually. Oh, unless yeah, they're it, tough. Yeah. It's like it, they're, they're, they're designed to be going off road and it had damage on it. Um, yeah. So it goes on to say the strike was recorded on cell phone video according to a criminal complaint, which also said that Stevenson did not know the woman who was hit. So it was just a moment of anger, bro. Just it's lost his temper. And look, in an instant, bro, your life has changed forever. So Yeah, and her life has changed. I mean, hopefully she's okay. It I says she's in she's critical right. condition. <sighs> I mean, you get run over by a car, it could have broken her spine. She could be par- I mean, for all we know, she could be paralyzed. She could it's have awful. brain damage. Yeah, dude. I Ruined hope she's okay. Life. And it's like, this is why um, act, not having self-control in a situation mm-hmm. where you could easily snap is so dangerous because in an instant, a uh, like a little bit of rage or a lot of rage in this case could ruin somebody else's life, ruin oh, yeah. your life. It's like, what would be the harm in waiting for the police to show up? The police are going to show up and go, Hey guys, could you cut it out? Some neighbors are complaining and they're going to go, all right. You know, it's not like they're going to rage against the police. I want to know like, well, how bad, like how crazy this fireworks show is that t- it ticked this guy, this guy off that much in well, order to go run over this girl. Yeah. It's a really good point. I mean, I don't know. I, but even so, if it was that crazy, bro, like you shouldn't be trying to drive over someone's fireworks or like trying to run someone over. Like I, I don't know what this guy was thinking. In a moment of just rage, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, I was trying to see. I mean, I I know there's. They said there was a video. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find anything. Um, it go, I found another article actually that says officials said she had a head injury and was flown via helicopter. Wow. To oh, Morristown, on. Morristown Memorial Hospital. Um, <sighs> this guy sucks. When police spoke to Stevenson, he said he didn't speak to the people setting off the fireworks and he admitted to driving off the roadway into the field. 
His Jeep uh, had visible front end damage. We already read that. Um, the fireworks display was allegedly set off on a property about one third of a mile from where Stevenson reportedly lives. This is crazy. I'm just trying to see if there's any other info that's relevant here. Yeah, but, so it's probably just like in a giant open field. Yeah, um, that's what it sounds these like. These kids were like, oh, let's just light all fireworks here because we're not bothering anyone. For her to get moved via helicopter to Morristown Dude, from no Lebanon, shots. it sounds like that was some pretty um, intense you know, damage that was done to her. So Also, think about like right now, like, Think about being in the field, laying off a firework, and you just see a jeep just storming at you, just like speeding, yeah. coming toward you. Like, oh my gosh, dude! It's it, it's he had to be It'll mess you up forever. S- some inst- instability mentally there for him to do any of this, and you know we'll see what happens. He's he's going to be tried. I I can't see a situation in which he doesn't receive jail time. I don't. I'm not a lawyer, and like we always talk about law related stuff. And I wish I was. I wish I understood the law better because I always wonder what's going to happen with situations like this. Run girl over, go to jail. I mean, that's that seems like... I mean, and she could... Hopefully, she's okay. But imagine if she had died, that would be... I, I That would absolutely be manslaughter. Oh, Maybe I don't know if it would be something more like... I don't know. So it might be like first degree manslaughter to go run somebody over with your car because they're lighting fireworks off. Who knows? So stupid, dude. But we'll see what happens. It's hopefully. just unnecessary. It didn't have to happen. Yeah, and thank goodness we live in a time where we could get a helicopter over and fly her to Morristown. We have in Jersey, we have such good hospitals for these types of situations and for head trauma. I think um, we have St. Barnabas, we have uh, Overlook and Summit. Like these are some really amazing hospitals for head trauma. I think Morristown's probably pretty solid as well. Uh, we have so many good hospitals in the state of New Jersey for these these types of situations. So hopefully she's all right and. Um, I don't know. I hope he goes to jail. I hope he does. There's some, there's some justice distributed here, right? 100%, brother. So moving on with the craziness of New Jersey, two Walmarts in New Jersey were evacuated this week after receiving bomb threats. Why are they threatening Walmart, bro? Walmart's done so much good for the community. Why are people trying to bomb it? That's a great question. I think- it's a great um, spot. I, I have some th- personal theories on this, um, but I'll read the article and then we can get into our personal theories. It says shoppers were hurried out of at least two Walmart stores in New Jersey following separate bomb threats at each location. The first call came into a Walmart in East Brunswick around lunchtime Monday afternoon. Police responded and evacuated all shoppers and staff. In a press release, East Brunswick police say they brought a bomb. They brought in bomb sniffing dogs to search the entire store. Uh, Police say nothing suspicious was found. So it sounds like a bomb hoax. And then the same thing happened at Walmart in Wachung, uh, just within that same week. So this is a, a reoccurring trend, and it actually goes in to say that it happened in Secaucus at a Walmart as well. So this is the third Walmart in New Jersey it's happened to, and um, it's happening within the tri-state area. It sounds to me like pranksters that are just calling, and here's the crazy thing. This is the, the, your, the time we live in where you could just call a Walmart right, or, or wherever, I could call a Walmart in California and call in a bomb threat. How I, don't they have the call records though? Can't they look? Can't investigators find your number through that somehow? I don't know. I think I there's, know there's ways it. around that. I mean, Google Voice, Star and Six other... Seven. Does that still work? <laughs> I, I wonder if that still works. I haven't done that since I was like 13. But maybe they, maybe they will. Maybe I, I'd imagine this is going to be not just a state thing, but probably a federal thing because it's happening in multiple states, and they'll probably call in investigators to look into it to see what the situation is. Maybe they could find out who is doing this and hopefully they do. It's because, terrifying, dude. You don't never, you never know if it's real or not. Yeah. And we can't, it goes back to the kid bringing the gun to school. Like we can't live in a, our culture can't last if this kind of stuff goes on. It's every other day. Something crazy is happening. What is going on with people that they just are so desperate for attention, attention, so desperate to, to make other people's lives May make other people feel fear. Maybe it's that that's like a power thing. It's right? insecurity. Yeah. People yeah. are lonely, insecure, depressed. They have nothing yeah. better to do. It's our culture, bro. It's and really it gives sad. them it gives them a feeling of power probably to go, I'm gonna go call this Walmart. And like I don't know. It just maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a power we, thing. We need go. to leave the Walmarts alone. Yeah, They're, man. They do so much for us, bro. Leave Britney alone and leave Walmart alone. Thank you. Thank you. I've Someone's been saying saying that. it, bro. Yeah. 
And shout out to Britney, dude. She just got married a few months ago. <laughs> that's we're not getting into Britney yet. This that's a it's whole other story. <laughs> there's a lot going on with Britney Spears, but yeah, there's it, they don't know who did it, and I hope they find out whoever did. I I think this Leave goes our back Walmart's to, alone. This goes back to can technology reach a point where we can eliminate cyber? <laughs> See, this is the thing. Can we get to a point where it's like we can stop this stuff? But also, as technology advances, there's going to be new ways to cause like cyber. If you want to call this a cyber crime, which I don't think it is, but you know, crime via telephones, via the internet. Um, I think it's only going to get worse for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as technology gets better, young people find hackers these like young creative people that have nothing better to do with their time find ways to to do this kind of stuff just gotta get baron trump back on cybersecurity. yeah he was right. he was chief of cyber there for a bit it's wasn't crazy he? yeah i think so wild um i but shout out to the bomb sniffing <laughs> dogs though like, i think that's the coolest thing in the world yeah i think that's dogs like, are so awesome it is really cool when, a, when how dogs are they can be used for such amazing purposes. I love the ones at the airport when you're in the security line and then they have like the dogs just walking up to you and just smelling. It's like, you're like, oh, it's such a cute little dog. But that dog is like smart. Like, it's a savage. He's working right there. He doesn't want to get pet. He doesn't want to like play with you. He wants to find a bomb. We don't deserve dogs. No, we don't. And especially the thing that kills me is the ones that work in like Penn Station and they're always the cutest black labs. And <sighs> you want to pet them? Yeah, dude. But they're working. You can't go near them, but they're like, they, they look like such awesome so dogs. So cool, dude. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the, the the coolest things. How we figured out how to train dogs to be used for like these awesome They're jobs. They're so smart, it's amazing. Well, hopefully this this is not a trend that continues. Yeah, just and cut it out. They better not come for Target next. That's no, all I'm gonna say. No, dude. If Target, if it happens to Target, we're man, out. We're it out. means war. We're out. Okay, moving on. Hey, hey, let's take a little deep breath. Yeah, can we breathe? This is okay, uh, yeah. This has been an intense, stressful podcast, man. So many crazy stories. You know, want, want to count it off really quickly? Yeah, we're gonna do a three, two, one, in through the nose, out through the mouth again. Mm, down, yeah. Three, two, one. <sighs> wow, that helped. That was great. Hopefully, the listeners at home did the same thing. Yeah, I hope you guys followed. If not, I'm gonna be really upset. Guys, the chaos of this state of New Jersey continues with our next story. It's Jersey. The, it's. Well, I think we're just living too close to each other. I think we need to start spreading out. I don't think humans were <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the problem. We have to go to Salem County down where Cowtown is, bro. Life was different down there. Things it's moved open. a little bit slower. People are all at peace. No one's fighting and yelling at each other. And everyone's Although, just chilling. We do read stories about Vineland and hear some craziness. That's true, yeah. Maybe we should just keep going with the stories. <laughs> so... An Elizabeth woman was arrested after attempting to bite a police officer at the Hurricane Harbor water park. D don't try to bite a police officer. It just won't work out well for you. I don't uh, know like what you think is going to happen, but dude, it's not good. This lady was not having a good day. It says this lady is an animal. A combative water park visitor spit on and kicked officers and attempted to bite their ankles. After refusing to leave That'll the water park, <laughs> well, how do you get to the point where you're trying to bite ankles? She just wants to ride all the slides, dude. She wants to just enjoy her day, and the cops are stopping her. Yeah, it says Cameron Serrano of Elizabeth continued to be uncooperative after arriving at the police station, Authority said. Uh, she had been charged with aggravated assault on a police officer, resisting arrest, criminal mischief, obstruction, and bodily fluids on law enforcement, which I guess is the spit. Yeah, she's spitting uh, over him. The incident occurred on July 3rd at Six Flags Hurricane Harbor, but a Facebook post about the arrest was not published until July 11th. So it sounds like she was down Fourth of July weekend at Hurricane Harbor, right in the big slide. No better place to be. Something went very wrong, and she got really upset with the police. So according to the Post, officers from the Ocean County Sheriff's Office and Jackson Police Department arrived on the scene to assist security with two females who were being argumentative. So she got in a fight with another girl. With a large crowd surrounding the incident, officers attempted to defuse the situation. At the time, Serrano pushed a security officer, uh, a Jackson detective, and a sheriff officer in an attempt to get at the unrelated party Authority said. So she was trying to fight this other girl, pushing police, trying to bite police's angles, and they got her on July 3rd. Mm. Once again, she wasn't so free that 4th of July. She she really thought she was going to get away with it. Let me just bite this officer ankle and just run away. Well, what do you expect when you name a place <laughs> Hurricane Harbor? Yeah, bro, it's crazy times. It's a it's a harbor of hurricanes, and, and she, she lived up to its name. I like used that. to have a season pass there. I used to go all the time. 
It's crazy there. I've been once or twice. It's it's pretty wild. It's uh, something always happening in Hurricane Harbor. Yeah, I'd say it, it's it, it it was par for the course. There was a hurricane in the harbor, Josh. Yes, sir. So yeah, man, uh, don't bite police officers' ankles. Don't don't try to bite anyone in general. I don't think it's ever going to work out. Yeah, I think this is um, not a human thing to do. It's not a good idea to just go bite somebody. Like we're not dogs. We're not animals here biting each other. If someone tried to bite my ankle. I would be pretty upset. I think so. I would laugh at first. I think, what are you doing? It's just like my natural instinct is to laugh at that because it's so ridiculous. Until they get a chomp on you, and then it's like they get a chunk out of your ankle. Ooh, like, rabies. If they're rabid, yeah. Yeah, dude, you never know with anyone. Well, chaos continues. We should go. We should go to Hurricane Harbor one of these days, ride a slide or two. I think um, the last time I was there with me and you, Ryan. Yeah, we went together with Ryan Abe. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Miss it. Moving on, a 25-foot dead whale was found under a dock in North Wildwood, New Jersey. Wow, dude. Beached whale. A beached whale. Well, a roughly 25-foot dead humpback whale was discovered under the docks of the Grassy Sound Marina in North Wildwood early Sunday morning. Biologists told 6ABC Action News they believe the whale was dead for quite some time, Uh, a terrapin was seen feasting on the carcass when it was found under the docks, according to a grassy, the Grassy Sound Marina Facebook post. According to the marina and reportedly uh, ABC6, responding officers said they received a report of a dead whale offshore about a week ago. The one found in North Wildwood may have been also the one that was spotted off Sea Isle and Avalon. It's not clear why the whale was stranded. According to ABC6, why do they keep referring to themselves? It's so annoying. Um, But according to ABC6 Action News, scientists at the beach think it might have been hit by a propeller from a boat. Uh, Testing will confirm the exact cause of death, though. R.I.P., dude. Yeah, R.I.P., That's a big boy, 25-footer. Well, how old would a 25-foot whale be? Because that seems like a humpback whale. Don't they get super long? I have no idea. I think these whales are just giant in general, no matter the age, right? Well, let's see. Humpback whale full length. Yeah, humpback whales grow up to 60 feet. Oh, so that thing is small. Yeah, it's a little baby. Still, that's, that's well, huge. Well, I don't know that it's a baby, but it might just be a smaller humpback whale. But can you imagine, like, seeing the photo of this whale? You guys got to look this up. Seeing a 25-foot fish just laying there dead. It's a monster. They're monsters. It's It literally is like, you look at it, and it's, it is a otherworldly looking creature it's so big and we don't realize some sometimes how big marine wildlife can be like a 60 foot whale that's like the length of a school bus isn't it you might have seen this guy don't you go on the whale watching trips in cape may yeah i used but we go to the dolphin the the whale tour is longer the dolphin tour is two hours the whale tour is like four have you done the whale one or no no i just see a lot a lot of uh dolphin and what's the other fish that looks like a dolphin um a shark no the other fish that looks like a dolphin. Yeah. What well, looks like a dolphin? Fish that looks like dolphin. I just know them as dolphin. No, they... Maybe it is a do, the same family, but there's a fish that looks exactly like a dolphin. And it's not a dolphin. I don't know what they're called, though. Porpoise. I was going to say that. A porpoise? Yeah. Like a turtle? A porpoise... Looks like a dolphin. <laughs> they're so cute. Look at that one. Yeah, they're very cute. I thought that, yeah, I, I just consider them dolphins. No, they, there's a difference. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how big of a difference, but yeah. Bro, why do dolphins look so funny? They're just smiling. They're <laughs> yeah, because they, they, they have the smile, natural smile on. <laughs> dolphins are apparently, I always hear this, and I've never read the, the science behind it, but dolphins are apparently super smart. Like oh, they, yeah, bro. They communicate with each other, and they have two hemispheres of their brain where when they sleep, one part of their brain is always awake and one part turns off to rejuvenate. It's pretty freaky. That's crazy. Yeah, I learned a lot of dolphin facts on the dolphin tour. Have you ever rode a dolphin? You know how people like do those tours and they can like yeah, ride with the yeah. dolphins? Never got to do that. It's, okay. co- it's crazy how many dolphins you see in Jersey in the summer though. Can you imagine if we could train dolphins like horses? And use <laughs> it's like there's rodeos, but with dolphins. People are just cruising around the o- ocean on the back of a dolphin. Man, too much coffee this podcast. But yeah, so the, the, the whale was found dead. And they don't know the exact cause of death. They think maybe a propeller hit it, but I don't know. 
Dolphins are are maybe the chillest of all wildlife. I love dolphins, bro. Oh, I meant to say whales. Not dolphins. <laughs> yeah, dolphins too, though. <laughs> I've heard some rumors about dolphins that are pretty freaky, but whales. Wait, they, what? I don't want to get into it on this. Just very say one. Just say podcast. one. They dolphins have been known to rape other dolphins. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it's wildlife. Well, no, I think it's more aggressive than just like. <laughs> I, I I don't want to get you, into you it. You can't be fooled by the smile. On the on the dolphin tour, they shared some information that that was <laughs> Josh's mic. Hello, testing. Josh's mic just got unplugged. It just the plug just fell so comically out of it. It you was good? in the whole time, right? Like you could hear me talking. I can always hear you. Yeah. Okay. Good. That was weird. Imagine if this whole thing wasn't recorded. Um. So whale yeah. watch. So I didn't want to get into the details about dolphins, but they are promiscuous beings that uh, they can be aggressive and mean, and they're smart, which makes it creepy. Like if you look at like a, I don't know, any sort of wildlife that's dumb, it's whatever. But dolphins, they, they're starting to think they know how to communicate a lot better than we think. Like they're, the function of their brain is very high. They can speak to each other. It's so cool. They have their own little dolphin language. Whoa. What if Ironbound got to this whale? Oh, what if Iron it was Mountain. like Ironbound, like taking down a whale? Do sharks t- attack whales? I, I don't know. Maybe. Or, or do they live in peace with one another? Like, do they have an agreement in the ocean? We're like, oh, you guys are big. We're tough. Let's just, you know, go our separate ways and do our own thing. Uh, great whites, sharks have nearly no natural predators, and they are one of the primary predators for marine mammals. Uh, yeah, there's even footage of a great white shark in South Africa killing a 33 foot humpback whale. So I guess wow, sharks beef. are savages. There's beef, dude. Yeah. So yeah, RIP to the whale. So sad. Gone too soon. I guess I won't be seeing him on the Cape May Whale Watcher because this is very close to Cape May. Um, next story: New York City releases a PSA video on what to do in the case of a nuclear attack. <laughs> just they drop this out of the blue, and then people just start freaking out. And the reason this is important to the Garden State is we live close enough that a nuke would affect us if it hit Manhattan. If it hits Manhattan, yeah, we're, we're kind of done for. My thing is I just would hop on Route 78 and start driving to Pennsylvania as fast as I could. Yeah, but if you did that, everyone else is doing that. And think about like the, yeah, how bad that traffic would be. Do you think most You would have to people, go off-roading. No, nah, I think when people panic, they, they freeze up. They're like, let's go in the basement. But it's, we're talking a nuclear attack here. I'd be it's the guy. It's not like a hurricane. A nuke is coming to hit New York City, and you, you're in your living room. You go, let's get in the car and drive on Route 78, or you go, get in the basement, shut all the doors. No, because, yeah, eventually it's going to come sneak into your house. And... But well, also, how fast, like, how quick not according do you to have the, to get away? Well, the PSA says the likelihood of one happening in, our, uh, in or near New York City is very low. But just in case, the video released Monday advises the following, get inside fast and don't stay in the car. Stay inside and shut all doors and windows. Head to the basement if possible. Remove and bag all out, uh, outer clothing if exposed outdoors. Stay tuned for the latest information. So Yeah, there's no threat, but here's a video just in case it happens. <sighs> I, I, Always got to be prepared, right? If a nuke hits Manhattan, yeah, I'm how much sorry time do we have? It. How much time do we have? Well, I think... So I heard from a friend. I don't know if this is true or not. Not to stoke fear among people, but let's say Russia, right? Russia has been in the news a lot lately. If a nuke is launched from Russia, I believe we have like 17 minutes before it would hit Manhattan. Okay. Something like that. It's within 20 minutes. So let's say a nuke is launched um, and we don't blow it up in the air over somewhere else, like over the uh, Atlantic ocean. Um, So let's say it's launched. We have 15 minutes to get out of where we live. I don't know how fast the, the, the charge would be from when it hits the ground. I'd imagine. I was going to say like once it hits though, how much time do I'd we imagine have? it's like instant. And what's the spread? Like, do we have to go out like to PA? Like, is it going to affect all of Jersey? I think there, I've seen charts online of a New York city nuke spread. Let's see. New York city nuke spread. <laughs> nuke Here you spread. go. So, wow. Yeah. We Uh-oh. might. Oh, so it looks like the core, the epicenter. Goes We're in as, that. I'm trying to find a, a larger image. Um, that seems like to be the main one. Yeah, here you go. So the the actual spread, the, like the epicenter spread, goes beyond Newark, um, and as far up as it looks like Paramus, and as far south as like Staten Island, down to what would that be? West of Staten? Would that be kind of the Elizabeth area? Right? Isn't there? that like Perth Amboy? No, Perth Amboy's down. Perth Amboy's that's, south, that's like yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah. So like Elizabeth, you a little bit of Union County, a little bit of Bergen County. Um, 
out on Long Island, and then the the wider ring, which I think is how far the radiation spreads, would be. That's where we have to get past. You have to get. I mean, that's almost out to Flemington, almost down to Princeton, down in Asbury Park. We'd have to be on seventy eight immediately. Bro, You'd have to be on seventy eight booking. But that's just the radiation spread. I think everything within the the core part would be done done. I think the spread, the ring spread, which is looks like it's probably a hundred miles. What do you think? That's a hundred miles. Cho fifty miles. Wait, which ring? The yellow ring. Yes. Um, no, like yeah, from New York City. That yeah, looks like, like fifty miles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I got on seventy eight and started booking it, I could get out in time. That would just be the the radiation. It's kind of freaky to think about. Yeah, I don't even want to think about. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's um, they're just. Why would New York City do this? I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to safety first, bro. Yeah, always got to be prepared. Why do we do fire drills in the case of a fire? And I guess a fire is just a little different than a nuke, though. <laughs> Just a little bit. Like they both like have severe consequences. How would the? I think this is a, a dark topic to talk about, and I think both of us agree this isn't going to happen. So we could talk about it a little bit more freely. Yeah. But how would the landscape of America change if New York City was nuked? Oh my gosh, dude! Like that's that is our city, New York City. Yeah. So like nobody would. New Jersey would change drastically. Um, people would, I, I'd imagine Pennsylvania would see an influx of people well, moving with the in. radiation. Look at that. Like, I feel like most people in Jersey, even if you're out of that ring are going to dip because they're like, there's still a possibility of radiation oh, yeah. in the air. Like that, Jersey would be done. I think that you would see another city begin to rise up. Maybe Philly would become the core of the East. Philly or, might or be like too close. Yeah. People still might be scared. Like I'd probably head out to the center of the country. I'd move to like Wyoming. Yeah. You would have <laughs> to just get far away, bro. I would. Hop on 78 and not stop until I hit Wyoming. Yeah, bro. So, yeah, I don't know if New York City was just trying to be helpful or or trying to freak people out a little bit, but I don't think we have to worry about this. And I think if you do live in Jersey, we're going to be all right. Well, also, yeah, if they do launch a nuclear attack, like I do believe they could stop it. Like with the technology we have, they'll be able to see it coming. But like, how do they even stop something? Well, there's the rumor in the 80s of Star Wars. Have you heard of that? The movie? (laughs) <laughs> no, it was, um, I think when President Reagan was in office, they had implemented something called Star Wars, which is defense all along our coastline that could mm. shoot off, um, I, I guess, missiles and even intergalactic threats. It's pretty sick. Um, but I think they also said that that wasn't as legit as it sounded like. But I also believe there's a lot of technology we have no idea about. Oh, yeah, I totally believe that. There's so much that they're not telling us. We also have Picatinny Arsenal in North Jersey, which is... I have this feeling like if something, a threat was going to hit New York City, Picatinny would be launching some stuff. We'd start hearing fireworks go off. Whoa. It would get epic really fast. Dude. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if Russia dropped a nuke on New York City, Russia would, would be pretty flat in about three days, I think. So I don't think it's going to happen. I hope for the sake of humanity, it doesn't happen. And I hope for the sake of uh, Jersey. But here's the reality is we have so many uh, contaminated rivers in Jersey. What would be the difference? The exactly. Raritan there, there's River. There's radiation everywhere. Look, the Colonial Raleigh High River. School. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> they already got radiation. So with that, that was all the stories we had for this week, Josh. Yo, that was uh, stacked, flew by. I can't believe like that was an hour. Time flies when you're having fun, man. Especially with your friends. Yeah, for sure. So thank you all for listening this week to the podcast. Uh, This is episode 25, Josh. We've made it to a quarter of a century. Amazing. Congrats, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's been listening. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Every single week. Your support means the world to us. Thank you guys so much for, you know, giving us a shot. And um, we love doing this. So it means a lot. I love it. It's a fun time. And uh, we hope the grind never stops. And by the way, I didn't realize earlier when you were talking about Central Jersey that you're wearing a Central Jersey Exists shirt. And you were saying, I don't know. Yeah. You were doubting. A listener sent us this shirt. It's pretty sick. That's a really cool shirt. What's the name of the account? I. It was months ago. I for, oh, forget. God. We if should you, link it. If we you, can link it. If you want the shirt, DM us on Instagram and I'll help you find it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, I'll send you their, their account so you can buy if one. If you are a Central Jersey believer like us. Josh, you got to believe. Like, seriously. I do believe. Eliminate all the doubts in your head right now. I do believe. I do. Get I, I do out. Believe. Get I that out. I have faith in Please. Central Jersey. Central Jersey is such a real thing, and I can't believe people. I feel so bad for people who don't believe in Central Jersey. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. With that, have an amazing week, everybody. We will see you next week. Hopefully, uh, we'll find Jimmy Parks next week. Yeah. Stay, stay clear of Walmart. 
Um, stay clear of Hurricane Harbor. Stay clear of Lower Manhattan. And God bless. Go to act. You know, you have to go to uh, Mountain Creek Water Park. We're, uh, these are the alternatives: Mountain Creek Water Park, yep. Target. Yep. And what was the third thing you said? Go to Philly. <laughs> oh no! Road. Gross, dude. All right. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for listening. See you later. See you later, guys. You're watching the Garden State. The Dirty Jurors.